Let's go ahead and do this problem. If you have not tried this problem on your own, push pause on the video and do the problem on your own. We want to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Notice that I've shortened that to just FTC, fundamental theorem of calculus. We want to find the definite integral from one to five of x squared plus two with respect to x. The first step, well, the first step, or maybe this is step zero, I guess, is to realize this x squared plus two is a polynomial, so it's continuous. Pretty easy to see that. So the fundamental theorem of calculus will work because x squared plus two is continuous and I can find an antiderivative. In fact, I can find lots of antiderivatives. Uh, let's choose one. Let's take one third x to the third plus two x plus a constant of zero. If you didn't want to choose zero as your constant, you could choose anything you wanted. In fact, I may do that a little bit later. But let's choose zero or excuse me, choose zero as my constant. It just makes less terms to deal with. One third x to the third plus two x is my antiderivative that I'm choosing. I need to plug in five into that function or that expression. And then I need to plug in one into that expression. Once I've done that, I can calculate this, oh, both of these numbers in the brackets. By the way, some people like to put all of this on one line on their calculator. Usually I do two. I calculate the first piece, I calculate the second piece, and then I subtract. But you can, if you're wanting to, just plug that all into one line on your calculator. So one third times five to the third plus two times five gives me 51 and two thirds. So 51 and two thirds in that first bracket. In the second bracket, I have one third times one to the third power plus two. That's two and one third when I type that in. When you subtract, you get a total area under this curve or a total signed area, I should say, of 49 and one third. In Moodle, it will ask you to round your answers to two decimal places likely. So most of the time, you can just utilize your calculator, turn that fraction into a decimal, or you can also turn that fraction into an improper fraction using your calculator. But 49 and one third is the area underneath x squared plus two from one to five. Notice how much smoother of a process this is than getting our approximations through Riemann sums. If I got those approximations, we'd have to get better and better approximations and <clears throat> it would just be a, be a tough time. The last thing I want to say here is that obviously we've been choosing a constant of zero but I want to emphasize that you could have chose any constant at all. In fact, I could have even chosen the arbitrary plus 
capital C. If I do that, when I plug in five, I get one third five to the third plus two times five plus C. And then I plug in one, I'd get one third one to the third power plus two times one plus C. So if I chose the arbitrary constant of plus C, notice what's gonna ha happen. This positive C and this minus C are gonna cancel each other out. So in other words, it's like I had 51 and two thirds plus a capital C and then minus two and a thirds minus capital C. They canceled each other out and you get the exact same answer. This goes to show you again, that doesn't matter what constant we use. So make it easy on ourselves. Any antiderivative will work. So let's pick the easy constant to deal with. And the easy constant to deal with in most cases is a constant of zero. 